Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to the Brantech Scientific uh, Webinar. This is the first of the series. Uh, my name is Akbar Nwari, and today's webinar pre uh, presenter is Dr. Stephanie Franco, and her topic is Why Do Life Science Consumables Matter? Microplate Basics, Selecting the Correct Plate for Your Application. And um, without any further ado, here is uh, Dr. Franco. Thank you, Akbar, and welcome everyone to today's webinar. This is the first in a series that we plan on having regarding the importance of life science consumables and other equipment. Cool, oh, please. Okay. Um, just to give you an overview on the topics that will be covered in today's webinar, we will be discussing life science plastics consumables but specifically focusing in on the microplates. We will review different types of capacities, what the difference is between surface modification and surface treatment of these microplates, as well as an overview of basic applications. At the end, we will go over a few microplate selection tools that Grand Tech has developed through Grand and have a question and answer session at the end. So at any point during this webinar, please enter a question on the box to your right, and we will answer these at the end of the webinar. Just to give you an overview, there are many different types of life science plastics. They have some microplates. There are insert systems. We also offer deep well plates, um, PCR plates, tubes, and strips, microcircuits, tubes, Cutes and pipette tips. But as mentioned, this webinar will focus on microplates. Now, what are the main characteristics of all of the life science plastics? There are differences in materials that are used. There are differences in type. As we just mentioned, there are microplates or PCR products or cuvettes. Each one of the different types of plastics is also going to have a different volume requirement. And in the case of tubes or plates, you will have different well formats. Color is also another very important characteristic of plastic, as this will be defined what you are using your plate for. Surface modifications and treatments can also affect the use of your plastic, as well as sterility. And as very important for many different life science plastics, is the fit in an instrumentation that you will be using it for. Today's focus is on microplates. Sometimes they have also been referred to as multi-well plates. The key questions to select the correct microplate that you're going to be answering is going to be first, what is the application that you need to do? How many samples and wells will be tested, what type of data will be collected, and how. In addition, very important is which instrument, if any, will be used for data collection. And in reviewing these questions, we will focus on the key characteristics that are for life science plastics. The first type, the material, raw and plates material. The applications will dictate the material type. There are two main types of materials that are used in multi-well plates. Um, these are polystyrene or polypropylene. Polystyrene is going to be most commonly used for bacteriology studies, immunoassays, and cell culture type of applications. Polypropylene, on the other hand, will be used for storage um, of maybe chemicals or your samples at cold temperatures. We are often used for PCR. The properties of the plastic that will give them the ability to be used for the various applications are, for polystyrene, this is a highly transparent material with optimum optical features. This will allow you to use this with, a, say, a plate reader or for microscopy. And the ability for this plastic to be easily modified or treated gives it a wide range of use. 
However, for polypropylene, this material is not as clear to be used, so it's not necessarily going to be great for anything optical. However, it does have the ability to withstand large temperature differences. It can go down to minus 80, and it can also be autoclavable. This is what it allows for it to be used for storage and handle the temperature fluctuation with PCR when you get to high temperatures. In addition, polypropylene has high chemical resistance, so it can be used for storage of different things, including DMSO. The disadvantage of this material is that it cannot be easily modified, but this property also gives it the ability to withstand temperatures and chemical resistance. For the polystyrene, on the other hand, it's not necessarily great for storing at very cold temperatures. It has low chemical resistance, and it does not have good temperature stability. However, this is what allows it to be easily modified and used for many applications. Moving on to another key aspect of material importance. Raw material quality is key to experimental integrity. This, what it means is for broad plates material, all of a polystyrene, polypropylene, is free from endotoxins, DNAs, RNAs, DNA, and these are cytotoxic free. In addition, we do the most that we can to eliminate any possible contaminants during the manufacturing process that would be leached into your experiment as you go forward. Um, examples of leachables that can e cause experimental contamination are things such as mold release agents and lubricants. So it's always important to make sure that when you start out picking a product to use that you have good high quality raw material. The next key consideration that you will need to have for plates um, in considering the application is the application will also dictate the microplate type. Now for simplicity, we will divide microplate types into two types, a standard plate and a transparent bottom plate. The standard plates, as visualized on the left, these are made in one piece and only of one raw material. These are also called massive or solid plates. Um, these are the most economical plates. They are simply manufactured, and you can do a wide range of applications in these plates. The next type of plate has a little bit more of a specific application. These are called transparent bottom plates. These plates differ slightly from the standard plate and that the upper structure, this is really two pieces of plastic. You have an upper structure that is made of a colored polystyrene material, and then you have the bottom part that consists of a transparent polystyrene. You use these plates for luminescence or fluorescence applications when a transparent bottom is required. Now, what this means is that your light source and your excitation source are going to be on opposite sides. You can also do imaging with the solid plates, but in this case, then you would need your excitation source or your light source and your camera or your reading input to be on the same side of the plastic. A key consideration to consider also for transparent bottom plates is since these are two plastics, um, some manufacturers will use adhesive. However, we use ultrasonic welding, which reduces any possible cytotoxicity that would result from the adhesive leaking into the plastic. This is key, once again, for controlling the variables and contamination within your experiments. Uh, the bronze plates, the solid plates I forgot to mention, the 96 wells have color embossing on them. These are alphanumeric coding. That will tell you, allow you to easily visualize where your wells are. The other place that we have, the transparent bottom, they also have alphanumeric coding, but these are not color-coded. However, you can still easily visualize which well position you are at. Next to consider is now that you know whether you need polystyrene or polypropylene 
um, narrowing it down to the polystyrene with the um, solid or transparent bottom, the next thing that you'll need to know is how many samples or sample volume do you need to use at one time. There are several different types of well capacities within a microplate. There are six well specialized microplates. There are 24 well specialized microplates. The most common, however, is going to be your 96 well plate. Um, and these are easily used with automation equipment and or pipettes, uh, manual pipettes, multi-channel pipettes. The 384 and 1536 well plates are more frequently used with automation equipment and allow you for higher throughput. Once again, as the number of samples goes up, the amount of volume that you can test at one time will decrease. In addition to standard well plates of those volumes, Brandtech also offers strip plates. This allows you to selectively use how many different wells or samples that you need to use at one time. Maybe you do not need to use 96 wells. In this case, you can have a frame where you have either eight strips, 12 strips of eight that you can split up individually. And this you would use with a gridded plate. So you can see the strips are individually um, divisible. Without the grid, you still have your strip of eight, but you have to use the whole strip of eight. And this is really automation equipment or any time you're doing an ELISA. The next consideration one should have is going to be a consideration for the well formats. Brand, Brand Tech offers four distinct bottom forms. Um, we each manufacturer will have a similar type, but we traditionally call these the U-bottom. U-bottom is a round bottom form. It has no edges or corners, and this is optimal for any sort of sample stirring that you may need. Um, an example of an application done in a round bottom is an agglutination test. The next bottom type is a V-bottom. V-bottom is for conical. This is a tapered bottom form, and this is for sample recovery anytime you need to uh, precipitate out a substance or maybe you need to centrifuge to get a cell pellet at the bottom, then you would use a V bottom. The next bottom type, and probably one of the more common bottom, type, bottom types along with the round bottom type, is the F bottom. The F bottom, flat bottom, allows you to have precise optical measurements. This also is good for microscopy applications. Um, and cell culture, where you need to do imaging. Uh, a bottom type that Brantec offers that is somewhat unique to our company um, is a C bottom. This is essentially combines the benefits of a round bottom and a flat bottom. We call this a curved bottom. It allows you to have essentially a flat bottom surface but at the edges, it's slightly rounded, which is good for imaging. So you do not get what you would typically see, um, edge artifact that you see during imaging. Um, in addition, the slight curvature allows, if you're doing any sort of cell culture, it allows to prevent the cells from bunching up at the sides and eliminating data that way. The next key consideration. Um, for your applications is going to be the color. The application it, that you're doing is going really to depend on the color. Uh, if you, basic rules are for transparent color plastics, you're going to be doing colorimetry applications or maybe bright field microscopy. Um, anytime you basically just need to see what's going on and you don't need a special light source. However, if you need to do fluorescence imaging, then you are going to want to have a black plastic. Um, for luminescence, you will want a white plastic. Now, the reason for this is that the white plastic will reflect the light, and this maximizes light output. For luminescent type of applications, you want to maximize the light output and minimize any sort of crosstalk. For that's the reason why you would use black in this particular case, is that the black color will absorb the light, and this will reduce any sort of fluorescent back background. 
Now, <clears throat> now this also is important when considering color. Um, the transparent light, the transparent plastic will allow the light to pass through. Think of a cuvette. You have your substance on the inside, light will go in one side and out the other side. A microplate is the same way, except for when you have transparent, your light comes in one side and goes out the other side. Solid colors are going to allow light to reflect. So if you look over here, for example, a solid white or black plate, your light is going to come in from one side and it's going to be reflected off the plastic and out the other side. However, if you have a transparent bottom, your light will come into the plastic and then go out the other side. So you also need to consider that you have quality plastic for this, especially when you have transparency, because any sort of scratches or unevenness to the surface will throw off any sort of data and light that you will get from this. The next key consideration, um, and this is, this is actually a very important distinction, is the surface. The surface, your application is always going to dictate which type of surface that you need. Now, the great thing about polystyrene is that these are easily modified. And there's a very clear distinction between modification and treatment. Um, you can also use this polystyrene in its pure form. Um, common surface modifications are treatments fall in various categories. Uh, you have untreated surfaces. You have surfaces that are specialized for immunology applications as well as cell culture applications. Now, the difference between a modification and a treatment is the modification is going to actually physically change the physical properties of the plastic. This is typically done using different gases and plasma, varying treatment period, and pressure that this treatment undergoes. Surface treatments, however, may consist of the addition of materials such as collagen or a hydrogel. This will change the binding properties of the plastic. So the difference between modification is you're actually changing the physical property of the plastic, um, where a coating would change the binding properties of the plastic, but not actually the plastic itself. All manufacturers have a different naming convention for the surface treatment um, or modification. In addition, it's important to consider because some treatment types um, may require refrigeration. This is an overview of the brand plates surface options that we have. We offer nine different service, uh, surface options. Uh, we have two untreated surfaces. We call this pure grade. Uh, this comes in sterile or not sterile. We have three surfaces specific for immunology applications. One is the immunograde sur uh, surface. This is optimized for your standard ELISAS or IgG. This is a, a high binding type of surface. We also have specialized surfaces, the hydrograde surface, which is for hydrophilic interactions, or the lipid grade surface, which is for lipophilic interactions. We have three different, four different types of cell culture surfaces. We have a line of cell grade surfaces. These are for adherent cell cultures. We also offer an inert grade, which is for the cult cultivation of suspension cells or stem cells. Now, we'll go into a little bit detail on these. Switching over to our pure grade surface, these are essentially untreated plates, um, commonly referred to medium binding plates. These are going to be the least expensive plates that you will um, be able to get. And they also serve the widest range of applications, anything from DNA, RNA, bacteria assays, screening assays, in addition, end users may often add their own treatment to this particular type. If you want to do coat it with, as I said earlier, collagen or, or maybe major gel, or add your own extracellular matrix protein to this. They come in sterile or non-sterile. The Brand Tech 
brand plates also uh, feature a gray embossed alpha numeric coating for the 96 well standard and white pla black plates to allow for easy well identification. The next family of products that brand plates uh, can offer is going to be the immunology surface. There are three different surfaces, and once again, this is plasma modified, which is going to alter the physical properties of the plastic. Um, any type of applications, including ELISAs or antibody, uh, frequently used in, in drug discovery. With the immunology surfaces, it's very important to consider whether or not you're doing a solid phase versus a liquid phase assay because the different types of surface you'll need will differ if you're looking at these types of applications. All immunology plates are non-sterile and feature a blue embossing um, for the alphanumeric coating to easily allow you to identify the wells. More into detail on immunology applications and how specifically to pick which type of uh, immunology surface that you need. It will first be dependent on whatever antigen detection or application that you're doing. Uh, a general way to consider this is looking at the difference between hydrophilic and hydrophobic um, molecules. On the, the right here, um, probably most everyone is familiar with the difference between hydrophilic and hydrophobic, but I want to remind you that um, hydrophilic is like when water loves the plastic, and it's like uh, a windshield with rain -X is on the right, so the bubbles, if you put rain on your windshield, then the bubbles will form and go off of your windshield. However, normally the water loves the plastic. So immunograde surface has a high binding capacity um, and it has binding properties for both hydrophilic and hydrophobic molecules. This is the standard surface for the ELISA plates uh, or other immunoassays. However, if you're looking at specific interactions, you want to consider the hydrograde surface, which will bind molecules with predominantly hydrophilic regions. Um, these will be assays, including glycoproteins, peptides, nucleic acids, buffer solutions, um, or blood proteins. The lipograde surface is lipophilic or hydrophobic and binds molecules with predominantly hydrophobic regions. Anytime you're looking at lipoproteins and peptides, maybe you have detergents in your solution, then you would need to use the lipograde surface. Now, I borrowed this image uh, from, from Google, but this goes to show that if you imagine your cell surface here, you have the inside of the cell membrane, which is a hydrophobic region, and you have the outside of the cell, Imagine this is the extracellular fluid or on the inside of the cell cytoplasm. Immunograde plates will bind anything within this region at some level. And as I mentioned, this is the most common surface for ELISA. Um, however, this is mostly used for solid phase assays when you need something to touch the surface of your plastics. These are available in standard microplate 96 well, 384 and 1536 formats, as well as strip plates. The next type of surface, if you'll see, is the hydrograde surface. Once again, looking at the same uh, cell membrane, the inside of the cell is hydrophobic, so basically anything on the outside of the cell membrane, the glycoprotein, specific regions of glycoprotein, it's anything extracellular or on the insides will work for this. However, not anything within the phospholipid bilayer. However, um, with that being said, that's for solid phase assay. You can use these for liquid phase assays when you're testing interaction of hydrophobic molecules. The last type of surface is the lipograde surface. And this has a high binding capacity for molecules with predominantly hydrophobic regions. So referring to our model of the cell membrane, anything the inside of the cell membrane that has the um, hydrophobic properties. Um, once again, lipoproteins, membrane proteins, um, and anything with a detergent. This can also be used in with hydrophilic molecules. 
going on to the next type of surface, um, so cell culture. The cell culture surfaces are going to be immunology surfaces, and that there can be plasma gas modification or hydrogel treatment. And this will also be physical properties or give different binding affinities to the plastic. Using either modification or treatment, it will give the different affinities. So there are three different types of adherent surfaces, cell grade, cell grade plus, cell grade premium, as well as a surface for suspension cells, the inert grade. Uh, applications, just as a general overview, uh, that you would use these type of plates for is going to be proliferation assays, adhesion assays, um, or for three cell culture and stem cell research. All cell culture plates are sterile product. These are also um, alphanumeric coated with an orange embossing to allow for easy well and sample identification. Now I think it's very important to discuss a little bit on the difference of 2D versus 3D cell culture. Uh, for my purposes, I consider 2D cell culture, adherent culture, and essentially the traditional approach with how people have done cell culture. Uh, you get a cell monolayer. The types of cells that you will use are immortal lines or primary lines. If you look to the right of the screen, this is a nice example of a monolayer grown on a cell grade surface. However, in recent approach to do 3D culture or suspension culture, there are several different ways to have this done. Um, you can have surfaces that will prevent adhesion. There are options for magnetic levitation of cells, uh, hanging drop assays, or you can create a scaffold. Uh, 3D cell culture is becoming very popular because it's, it's more physiologically relevant than 2D culture. And it's not quite as extensive as actually moving your research into an animal and going uh, in vivo. The different types of research that has been done using 3D, this 3D approach, uh, stem cells, tumor cells, uh, you may hear the words spheroids or embryoid bodies. If you look to the right, this is an example of what a spheroid looks like. And this was, these cells were grown on our inert grade um, surface. As you can see, it's vastly different than what the appearance of the monolayer is. Now, the next question that I have is, um, why do plastics matter for cell culture? The plastic is actually very, very important. And the reason being is I did borrow these images from the internet. The top image is an example of a cell-to-cell -cell interaction or a cell-to-plastic interaction. And the bottom image is all of the different receptors that are on the outside of a cell membrane. And it's a very complicated um, process. So cells themselves have two options. They can attach to another cell, or they can attach to a surface. Now, when cells attach, they turn on different signaling pathways. And as you can see from the image below, these are very complicated. And if something binds differently, you'll have a, a growth pattern difference, or maybe the cell will go down the signaling pathway, allowing it to differentiate into a different cell type or an adult cell type. Or maybe when it attaches, it gets signaled to cause cell death. Cells will adhere or not adhere based on charge. So once again, you don't want your cell inappropriately binding to plastic to cause a different signaling cascade to go on. The reason why polystyrene is so great to use and why plastics actually matter is because we can easily manipulate the surface to alter the charge of the plastic. And by altering the charge of the plastic, we can tightly control which type of cellular behavior we want to happen. This is an example of the three different cell culture surfaces that we have. Um, and just to show you what it looks like on an adherent surface, a surface that we offer is standard for the cultivation of most normal cells. This is a standard tissue culture surface. This top row here is an example of show cells grown on polystyrene 
uh, a competitive surface as well as the sub gray surface. Um, you can see the cells don't look all that great when they're just grown on standard polystyrene. However, when you alter the plastics a little bit to um, mimic more of a, a cell culture surface, the cells are nicely spread out, you have very nice nuclei, and they're very nicely formed. The cell grade plus is the next step up. This surface is used um, maybe for sensitive cell lines that have a different uh, binding requirement. Also in instances where you need serum reduced cultivation of the cells, um, if you're doing transfections. This would bind a little bit, bind it a little bit better because it offers a protein-like surface composition and it allows the cells to attach better and spread out better. Once again, looking to the picture on the right, the middle row is the sub gray plus. Cells grown on polystyrene aren't necessarily all that gray, but once you move to the cell gray plus surfaces, they look good. The cell gray premium is the um, is essentially a polydilysine equivalent product without actually requiring you to coat your surface with polydilysine. We accomplish this. Um, by using the plasma modification. Uh, this is because you optimal that, that really need to adhere to the plastic. The reason why the cellular plus surface is so advantageous over traditionally treating your own products with polydilysine is that you can be guaranteed a homogenous surface um, how plastic is treated. Uh, in addition, you don't have to keep these products at room temperature. You can keep these products at room temperature. You don't have to worry about making your own polyvinyl solution from the lyophilization, making sure that that is you know properly done. This is also uh, less expensive than creating your own polyvinyl type of surfaces, and not to mention because of the way the plates are modified during manufacturing, it's uniform, and you will always have a re producible distribution of charge. Now the key take home with the difference on the cell culture surfaces is that different charges on the surface are going to allow different cells with different culture conditions to proliferate like over to our inert grade surface. Um, the inert grade surface is um, hydrogel coated. Uh, that allows for the cultivation of suspension cells or um, non-adherent cell lines. Uh, this hydrogel treatment is done after the plastic is manufactured, um, and it reduces cell adhesion and it keeps protein absorption to a minimum. So you're also you're not going to have proteins sitting down binding to anything. The cells are actually going to bind better to themselves. We currently only offer these in a 96 well format, and just to show you a comparison. Um, these are L929 cells that were grown in a competitive uh, low attachment surface plate um, or the inert grade surface on the bottom. As you can see, the images you have on um, the competitive surface, you have a wide range of sizes. While you do have this nice large spheroid, um, you have a wide range. Now, when you look at the inert grade surface, you have nice even spheres. Uh, they're very close in size to each other and there's a lot of them. Now when you look at the actual spheroid itself, one would think, oh, bigger is better. But in this case, when you're doing spheroid research or any sort of 3D research, larger is not better. What you want is consistent sized spheres. Uh, once you get up to be large, the cells on the inside of this will start dying and therefore you cannot get data. And of course, when you're looking at all of the different spheroids, your um, size is actually going to skew when your standard deviation is going to be off. So what you really want is spheroids that are all essentially the same size so you can make data that is consistent within your experiment. Uh, I'm going to briefly touch on a product that we will be offering shortly. Um, it's called the insert system. This is a, another uh, cell culture type of system um, that we are coming out with just now. Uh, these have um, 6 or 24 well plates and specially designed cell culture inserts. These were developed in cooperation with the Fraunhofer Society in Germany. 
uh, to do 3D culturing of epithelial scalp, cells, skin tissue, essentially. Um, this is going to be used for the prevention of animal testing in the cosmetics industry. Um, basically, what the system is, is you have your plate and you have an insert system um, that goes perfectly within the individual well. The insert has ridges that will fit perfectly. And these can be used with um, manual use pipettes or uh, with automated instrumentation. What other types of applications can you use insert systems with? Uh, you, if you are looking for co-culture or migration studies or maybe chemotaxis assays, then this would be something good to use. Uh, the, the inserts vary on pore size as uh, insert material. The insert material may be polycarbonate or PET for optical imaging. And the pore size that you can be used from 0.4, 1 micron, 3 micron, or 8 micron uh, will differ depending on what type of application that you are looking to do. Now, a next consideration, and not only in consideration of the importance of the quality of the plastic is sterilization. We offer several um, sterile products, and these are sterilized according to the ISO guidelines. Um, and this assurance level is going to be 10 to negative 6. Basically, what this means is that no more than one part in a million is contaminated. We have two different methods of sterilization. Uh, beta radiation is going to be for the pure grade or the cell grade, cell culture surfaces. Uh, however, for the inert grade plates, because it has a different type of um, treatment instead of a modification, we use ethylene oxide for sterilization. Now, I, I think another key, key component that is probably one of the, mo the kickers of how to select the microplate is instrumentation fit. Um, to give you a little bit background, um, one of the questions people always ask is, will that plate fit with this? There are several different types of plate readers out there. There are several different types of liquid handling robots. But to make a long story short, yes, that plate will most likely fit. Because in the middle of the 90s, a society, the Society for Biomolecules basically got together and said, OK, if we're going to build the instruments, we have to make sure that the products are standardized to go within the instrument. So all of the manufacturers got together and said, let's define a standard. So in 1995, they did this. Um, and they standardized on footprint dimensions, height dimensions, bottom outside flange dimensions, and the well positions. Now, in 2010, the Society for Biomolecular Sciences turned into the Society for Laboratory Automation. And so you will see standards written as ANSI SLAS, um, 1 through 2004, um, through 2000, or through ANSI SLAS for 2004. You may also see these written as SBS. The key to that being is here's the, a list of the different standards um, being footprint, height, and well positions. Now I will point out that there may be slight differences between the manufacturers and a plate's appearance. Maybe the side wall thickness may be a little different. Maybe the cut corners, if you can see over here, a cut corner on the plate may be a little different. The wall depth may be a little different, or their labeling could be different. However, I can guarantee you that all critical standards of the actual shape of the microplate um, are going to be compatible with automation and liquid handling equipment, as long as they fall within the standards. Uh, protocol calibration may be required between different manufacturers' plates, but yes, what you really, really need to consider is what type of plate do you need, what type of surface, how, how high of a quality of a plastic do you need. Now, I hope that reviewing all of the different characteristics of microplates, that we will be able to help you answer the key questions for correct microplate selection. First, what is the application? Do you need cell culture? 
immunology. Do you need to use um, an, an instrument with this? Um, are you going to be doing white light or fluorescent light? How many samples and wells are you going to be testing? Do you need a 96 watt plate or a 384? In addition, what type of data will be collected? Are you going to do quantification or do you just need to do imaging? Are, these are all key questions. Um, in addition, what type of instruments will be used for the data collection? And will it fit? Bronze um, and Brantec has a neat little selection tool on the web um, where we allow you to select the different types of cavities, what type of material that you need, whether you need a standard or transparent. And based on responses to this, it will deliver you a selection of plates that may fit your applications. The website where you can find this at is www.brandtech.com slash plate selection. In addition to selecting on the physical properties of the plate, you can also click a link to search by application. So what type of application you're going to be doing. Maybe you're looking for a LISA plate. You can click on a LISA and it will return um, different plates that may fit this. Um, However, you know, maybe you don't see your application here, or maybe you don't know. You can always contact us. We also have instrument compatibility charts available um, on our website. The website is listed below. Um, and this is for several different types of instruments, whether you're looking at a PCR machine or a liquid handling machine, a plate reader. And it will show you all of the different plates that we have and whether or not they have been tested. I want to be very clear here that this list is not all inclusive. Uh, this is just if you have a specific instrument question and you do not see it on the list, please contact us and we will make sure that we add it to the list. Next, we also have a wide variety of technical articles. Um, if you're looking to um, see if anything's ever been done before. Well, the ones that we have right now are a lot of cell culture. Um, you know how some of the cells have worked with our products in the past from various laboratories. Um, and this can be found also on our website at grantech.com article under the support tab. And I would like to now thank you for your attention. You will also um, and I will open up the floor to questions, but before I do, I would like to also mention that we do have a sample program. So any of the plates, if you have a question, you need to test it out, you would contact us and then we listen to a sample. You can try the plates out and let us know how it works. So with that, uh, we'll open the floor to questions. Thank you, Dr. Franco. Um, I have a uh, looking over the list here, we have a couple of questions that have been asked. Uh, let's see, the first one here is uh, you mentioned that uh, white microplates are uh, used for luminescence and that the uh, black uh, microplates are used for fluorescence. Why are white microplates recommended for real-time PCR, which is uh, a fluorescence application? Okay, well that's um, an excellent question, actually, and this goes back to cons doing the consideration of um, what material you're going to be using. Um, PCR and traditional microplates are made from different plastics. Uh, the PCR plates are polypropylene. Um, polystyrene itself is um, a naturally autofluorescent material. So if you're doing any sort of fluorescent light measurements, the polystyrene is going to give off high levels of autofluorescence, thus you're going to get a high level of background. However, when you want to quench this, black, the color black, will, um, is used to absorb the light. So now the only measurable fluorescence is coming from your sample and not from any sort of autofluorescence of the plastic. However, when you're looking at something like qPCR, polypropylene is used because it's not able to be easily altered. Um, and it, polypropylene itself just lacks autofluorescence. Um, why they use white here is because during manufacturing, they add um, titanium dioxide, which not only helps to make the surface uniform, but gives it the white color. Now, the white color 
um, is added to optimize any sort of light reflection and eliminate any crosstalk. In addition, if you remember the idea that we had where the light comes in from one side and comes out from the other side, um, you have epi illumination for where the light will come in and it will be imaged, the signal output signal will be imaged from the same side, maximum reflection. So the white really helps the uh, light reflect off the surface. So I, I hope that's a good answer for you. Thank you. And uh, let's see, there's the, another question we have here. Um, on your plates for Im immune assays, you mentioned that you have specific treatments to bind hydrophilic or hydrophobic proteins. How would you choose a plate for a liquid phase assay? Okay, well this is also um, an excellent question. The treatments to the plastic, or the modifications we'll, we'll call them, um, is good when you want something to bind to that particular surface. However, if you were doing something that's in a liquid phase, you want your surface to be the exact opposite of what you're looking to do in solution. For instance, if you wanted to do a competition assay and test for the hydrophobic molecules to compete away um, another molecule, you need the surface and your interaction to be opposite. So once you're looking for hydrophobic interaction, you need your surface to be the opposite hydrophilic so it will repel it and your proteins or whatever it is that you're looking at won't actually bind and it will stay in solution. So in this case, opposite of what you want to look at. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That's, that's, that's great. Uh, that looks like to be all of the questions that we have so far. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Franco for uh, her presentation and uh, thank our attendees for uh, being here with us. And uh, we hope that more of you will come for the other, uh, the other sessions that we'll have in the future. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Thank you.